Good afternoon, everyone. It was interesting talking to some people from Newcastle University, and they're just doing their courses at present there. And then I realised when I left Newcastle, which was in 1974, <laughs> long before many of you were born. <laughs> anyway, it's good to be here today. And we're going to talk about port design for small LNG carriers. Some of the things have been covered already, but we're going to think about small LNG carriers, weather restrictions, and different sizes of LNG carrier, and how we can moor them. What is a small LNG carrier? Traditionally, large LNG carriers have been described as those between 125,000 cubic metres and 266,000 cubic metres. There are several really quite old LNG carriers between 65,000 and 87,000 cubic metres, which were built anything up to 45 years ago. And they were designed and built for very specific trades, usually in the Far East. And then along the way have come one or two other sizes of LNG carriers of 30,000 ton, 30,000 cubic meter, some 20, 23,000, and then several at 18,500 cubic meters. We're going to be thinking about LNG carriers up to about 60,000 cubic meters today. And we're going to be thinking about 60,000, 40,000, and those under 20,000. And they have different characteristics and different mooring abilities. <coughs> How this paper came about was because every so often a client says to us, Thanks for designing an LNG jetty to carry to take account of the biggest LNG carriers. We'd also like you to look at how we can use that jetty for small LNG carriers. And by the way, when you look at those small LNG carriers, we want no extra costs, no extra time on the construction schedule. We want it all for nothing. And we want also to be able to do it in the same weather conditions that we can do it for the big LNG carriers. And of course, the client can't have all those things. These in the, this middle column here are the typical restrictions we have for a large LNG carrier on a standard LNG berth, whether it be an import terminal or an export terminal. But clearly, if we've got very small vessels, particularly the bunker-sized ships that we've talked about a lot today, we won't be able to moor up in such bad conditions as we can with a large LNG carrier. So we're looking at perhaps only 20 knots of wind in which we can do the mooring of one of these vessels. Then the next stage is how long can we stay on the berth loading the bunker vessel? And again, the wind speed in which we can do that is going to be less than we can for a large one, perhaps 24, 25 knots for the small ship maybe up to 35 knots for a big ship. And at that point, we start thinking about retracting the arms that are attached to the LNG carrier, whether it's big or small. Mooring, the moorings for a big LNG carrier are normally designed to, to withstand a 50 knot wind from any direction. But it's clear that these small LNG carriers, particularly these five and 6,000 ton well, cubic meter ones that we've talked about today, they have to leave long before we get to wind speeds of this because the moorings are not suitable, which we'll see in a moment. And as always with a ship, the safest place for a ship is not tied up alongside a jetty, but out at sea. These are typical hoses between two ships in this case. It's, it's used for ship, these hoses are the ones that are used for, bunker, for bunkering off ships. And sometimes they might be used for filling a bunker ship. But they're, they take craneage, they're difficult to handle, and there's a lot of manual work involved in getting these hoses connected.
can see here the difference in size between small LNG bunker ships and a typical LNG carrier. There's a big difference in freeboard height and hence in height of the, the loading manifolds. And you can see this, this is a ship to ship connection. They're only doing it in perfect weather conditions. And you can see some Yokohama fenders in between to keep them apart. This is a typical layout for an LNG jetty. There will also be a trestle back to the shore. Currently, LNG jetties need a trestle back to the shore because it's very unusual to put a, an LNG pipe underwater. Some, there's one or two systems that have been tried and they're very, very expensive. So the standard way is a trestle with all the piping, particularly all the LNG piping above water. As you can imagine, the LNG piping is very thin, 9% nickel steel or maybe stainless steel with a big thickness of insulation on it. And the key thing about LNG is that we do try to keep it at one, six, minus 162 degrees all the time. And that involves a lot of insulation. So up to the point of loading the bunker ship, it's always at minus 162 degrees centigrade. This shows the smaller size of the <coughs> LNG carrier that we consider. And in this case, it's put in contact with two of the breasting dolphins. And this one's probably not at all. This one's definitely not. And it's only moored up to one mooring dolphin at each end. So it's obvious that this ship cannot stay there in such bad conditions as if you had a big ship moored to all the dolphins. To help to cut down on the loads into these breasting dolphins, we might also put some temporary Yokohama fenders between the bunker ship and the loading platform. That in itself might mean we need to increase the size of the loading platform some, some, in some way so that we can deploy a Yokohama fender over the side with a winch. This is not an ideal situation and this only works in good weather conditions. This shows a shore jetty with a loading arm going onto a coastal LNG carrier. And here they're able to make use of an arm. And it's all, most people prefer to use an arm for loading an LNG carrier, whether it's big or small, rather than hoses, because you've got all the AESDs built into it, all the control lines. It's much, and everything here is, also, is controlled by somebody with a small box get the loading arm connected properly into the manifold on the ship. With the hoses, there's probably people very, very close to the ends of the hose as it, to get it attached. When we go to the 40,000 cubic meter LNG carriers, of which there's, there are none actually at present, but people talk about them occasionally, you see they're then on three resting dolphins, and you're on two mooring dolphins at either end, and the weather conditions in which you could moor a such ship of this size are much better than the very small energy carriers. When you get up to the 80,000 cubic meter LNG carriers, then you're touching the parallel body of the ship on all four breasting dolphins and all six mooring dolphins. And here you're beginning to be able to operate the ship in the same conditions that you might for the Q, Q max of 266,000 cubic metre vessels. This shows a picture of a ship, I think this is a 7,500 7, 7, cubic metre LNG carrier coming into the berth. You can see already that the parallel side of the vessel would touch here and here, but not here and here. But this location is in a sheltered harbour and they'll be able to stay there in quite bad conditions. Here's a typical jetty, LNG 
jetted for big ships. So they've got five arms in total. They've got fire, fire hydrants at the two ends and a tower gangway here in the middle. Here they've got some small fenders here. And these are obviously to help uh, uh, bunker ships coming alongside if they ever have to bring them into the jetty. You can see how, how high the arms are here, and we'll discuss that in a moment. Here's another jetty where someone has put, built some fenders into the middle. It's not always like that because if a big ship touches against those fenders there, it puts loads into the, into the loading platform. And that's one thing we don't want because we've got all these pipes coming out here and of course on a loading platform we're, we're circulating the LNG all the time to keep all the pipes cool. How they operate this without making sure that no big ships hit it, I'm not sure, but the big ship should only ever touch these bigger fenders here and not the small ones in between. These are typical large LNG carriers. It shows the height of the manifold above the waterline and it's between 18 metres and 21 metres depending on laden or ballast conditions. And one of the things about large LNG carriers is that in terms of draft, they're, they're never more than 12 metres, no matter how much LNG they carry. They just in, keep increasing the width of them. And the other thing is that the freeboard is nearly always the same as well, so that the manifold is always the same height, more or less above the waterline, between 18 and 21 metres. So if we're not going to increase the costs for making one of these jetties suitable for small LNG carriers, then we need also to have a manifold platform on the small LNG carriers that matches this. So these are small LNG carriers from 18,000 cubic meters, six and 7,000 cubic meters, and 12,000 What they've done here is they have two manifolds, one at a low level, and I'll come back to that one in a moment, and a high level one. The high level one you can see is roughly the same sort of height as the manifolds on the very largest LNG carriers, 18, 17 metres, the lowest is 13 metres here. Most are in this range of 18, 16, 18 average depth. And by doing that, put, spending more money on the bunker ship, it means that the LNG jetties that we're designing for big vessels don't need to be changed. We've seen pictures of this vessel already. This is a Spanish LNG carrier, 600 meters cubed. And you can see here, it's up against an LNG berth, and there's no way that these LNG arms can reach down to here. So the only way of loading the ship then would, would be what they're doing up here by hoses, which in itself is something that's done all the time. But it's a really good weather operation to connect hoses. It's much more efficient to use arms. The, the very recent bunker ships have a low level manifold and a higher level man manifold. And in general, these higher level manifolds can be accessed by the loading arms on the export or import jetties. The lower manifolds, they're for, used for loading into container ships or whichever ships are taking LNG as a bunker fuel. And then the connection is by hoses which are handled by these cranes. Another small LNG ship. Yeah. 
You can see here again very clearly on the shell vessel, high level manifold and a low level manifold. And I suppose that's the lesson of this short paper today. The bunker vessel, you need to spend a lot of money, extra money on it, putting in two extra sets of manifolds. So it's manifolds either side, and a low level and a high level. It's a bit short, the paper today, but you won't mind that. So there's, there's two lessons to be learned from the studies we've done for our clients. They don't want to change the jetties that we're designing for big ships, but they do want the bunker ships to turn up with two levels of manifold, and that's it. <laughs>